The mission of the Housing Authority of Cochise County has expanded affordable housing options and promotes home ownership and improves the quality of housing in Cochise County. And as the new year begins, HACC is taking over all public housing functions for the city of Douglas. Prior to this transaction, HACC was allocated 493 tenant-based housing choice vouchers, or HCVSs, and the city of Douglas 193. All 686 will now be allocated to the county's HACC. In-person services remain available to service users in Douglas every Wednesday from 9 till 4 at the Cochise County Regional Service Center located on G Avenue. Questions about the transition or other housing matters can be addressed to the team at 520-432-8880. And the Sierra Vista Compost Facility is accepting undecorated natural Christmas trees at no charge to Sierra Vista and Cochise County residents through January the 30th. Trees will be chipped and composted. Ken Robinson, Town Square Media News. First watch now. What you need to know from the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Hosted by Cochise County Public Information Officers Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. First watch on 92.3 KWCD. And it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, giving you an inside look into your Sheriff's Office. I'm Grady Butler, and with me is Carol Kappas, Public Information Officer with the Sheriff's Office, and Sheriff Mark Daniels. Good morning. Good morning, and Happy New Year, Cochise County. Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah, we had two weeks off, so we're kind of easing back into this now. we got to start with introductions. Who are we again? That's right. Who are these people? (laughs) That's right. (laughs) No, it's good to be back. So let's uh, let's kind of dig back into uh, last year a little bit. And let's talk with Shop of the Cop because we didn't talk we didn't get to talk about how successful it was. And and both of them, the one that was in Benson, that's the one that we put on up in Benson with our fellow law enforcement, uh, turned out. And and Kristen uh, that does that from our evidence team, she does an amazing job with that. And so it was just a good day up there. They land the helicopter. The Walmart people in Benson were out there greeting us when we pulled in with the caravan of lights and sirens with the kids and just turned out so, so nice. So kudos to her and her committee that puts this on. And then the Benson or the service to shop with the cop, another says. So again, it's law enforcement giving back to our, our kids in need. That was Anna Stembro that did that. And we yes. were able to pull that together because she'd given us plenty of notice to be out there with a vehicle. Um, so we just had to make sure that we got somebody out there. <clears throat> and with the holidays, it makes it a little bit difficult, but we were able to get that done. So thanks, Anna, for being patient with us, and thank you to our staff who went out there and helped along the way. You know, you look at the holiday season this year. It seems like we, you know, between ringing the bell, tree lighting, parades, um, stocking stuffers, wrapping gifts, delivering gifts to kids, shop with the cop. I mean, we went above and beyond. And I say it in such a great way, not a way of uh, stress, but a way of wow, we, we really gave back, and I'm so proud of my team that did that. And then the, uh, and later in the show, we're going to have the Sierra Vista Fire Department. They're going to kind of give us a wrap-up of what they did for the holiday season as well, so we're going to have them on the show. It's pretty fun. Yeah, when it comes to public safety, and this is what I, I still say, rural policing, rural public safety is pretty special. We all know each other well. We all work really close together, but at the end of the day, we're standing united to keep people safe in our community. So, again, I know the fire department's got an awesome program here, too. Uh, they put a, a lot of time and effort. I know, uh, great you and your team are out there, too, supporting that. Yeah, we love to support that every year. Uh, speaking of support, we want to thank uh, Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative for the past year of sponsoring this show. They've done a great job for us, and they're really good in our community as well. Well, they're one of those uh, organizations that you hear so much about. Again, they no matter what community event it is, whether it's helping kids, whether it's a community event bringing the community together, SSVC logo is right there, and they're sponsoring it. And I know people say, well, I don't like paying the electricity bill. It's pretty nominal for what we get. When we turn the lights on, you got heat, you got lights, you got power, you can cook, all the different things that we take uh, for granted. I, I think it's pretty cool. Thank you over at SSVC for Jason and all your team. And just this week, you filmed a video with them that uh, is going to come out pretty soon about uh, attacking grids, because that's a very serious crime. It is. Public utilities. And what it is, you saw uh, there was an attack in North Carolina, an attack in the state of Washington, where they went after the power grids, shutting power down. Besides being a state crime, that's a felony crime. It's really a terrorist act when you start attacking communities in mass like that. Because that impacts so many people. So we did. We did a video. Uh, Jason Bowling, their president, CEO, and Manny, their vice president. We did the video this week, and uh, just a short video, but letting people know that we stand with our uh, our public utilities, our SSVC folks. That if you do that and take out a public utility, you will be charged. And the and the sanction on that is usually jail or prison. 
And so th- that's one of the things that we really have to pay close attention to. And some of the other things is um, when, you know, you have a new year and, and everything going on, you have a, a message that you send out. So we make sure that we hit on that. So what is your New Year's message? Well, my annual message, we got to post it on our Facebook. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go read that. But it's pretty much our cultural message, which we embrace every year. It's my annual message. And there's two things I hit really hard on. Uh, the first thing is our personnel. I mean, last year, 2022, was a very, let's say, a violent year, both for some of our citizens in the county and the attack, both verbally and physically, on law enforcement, whether it's border-related, whether it's just individuals in communities that are attacking our, our folks. That's intolerable. It, it really is. And so we'll, and my message is to my, my team, we'll never let them stand alone. We're going to be there with them all the time, all the way through these critical events. And I'll talk about another event here at the end of the show Second thing is leadership. Make sure we're leading the community. And what I mean by that is we have to lead our teams. We have to lead within the community and meet their expectations. And last but not least is um, the rule of law. We're not above the rule of law. None of us are. And we have to work within the rule of law. That's what this country is all about. It's the backbone. And we'll continue to do that. Absent politics, absence emotions, sensations, opinions, you name it. We're going to force the rule of law as the, the state uh, allows us allows us to do and so speaking of rule of law and new years there was the dui task force that was out over the holiday and they made several arrests uh rather sad i mean the best most successful dui task force is when you get zero we had I believe it was 10 10 people arrested for impaired driving and that's on new year's eve i was out there i brought in the new year working the, with the team out there uh, it's about one in the morning but it's sad when you know there's more law enforcement than there are civilian drivers and some people made those comments so you're gonna go out in in, in paired mode and drive within that net well like i said 10 people uh were arrested that evening so we got to do a better job on that and i'm not talking about law enforcement i'm talking about those that choose to drink and drive coming up we've got a little bit of celebrating to do as we kick off another academy yes we have a new police academy kicks off monday actually sunday they'll be pulling in there getting yelled at and starting all the trends and uh, working that discipline out, as you can call it. But long story short, yeah, we have a new police academy. Again, shout out to Cochise College, our partner there. And so we're, we're looking forward to that and pushing another group of law enforcement professionals down the, down the road on, on that. And then we also have a dispatch academy kicking off this, uh, January 17th. Brand new for us. We've done them before. But, Carol, you're leading that. And how's that looking? Oh, my gosh. You know, it's just all of it, the 11th hour, um, trying to pull all of those little pieces in. Um, it looks like right now we'll probably have about 20. I'm hoping for 20. Um, so there's, you know, hiccups along the way, working with different organizations and trying to get this done. But I really have to say um, for J.D. at the college and for Eric Brooks at the college being so phenomenal and trying to help us, you know, put all the pens in the holes in the last second. But um, most specifically to the people on our side of it, Tammy Jo from Emergency Services has been phenomenal. Um, you know, she's she's the communications person and and reaching out to people and trying to keep everything organized and you know it, that's the saving grace right there so everybody and and to dan for allowing her to do that and even for helping from an emergency services standpoint so um when they do the the speaking part of it it's just you know how does emergency services coincide with the sheriff's office and this is just one of the ways it's it's not necessarily their role but for them to be able to step up and and take that pressure off of our organization to help and and work seamlessly and transparently is you know we cannot say enough well there's no doubt i mean no matter where you go in the country uh, recruitment retention is huge in public safety Mm -hmm. student firefighters and we'll talk later about that (laughs) but um but when it comes to dispatchers and law enforcement we've we've taken some challenges right now so kudos to everybody that stepped forward and, and faced the right direction here to help us do that, whether it's our CECOM leadership, uh, you, Carol, Tammy Joe, uh, everybody that's doing that. And so we got this academy. I'm really excited about that. Where And, and Cochise College opening the door again for us to do that. They know, they see the need for it, uh, and that's why that's a community college. I think there's something to be said for that. I truly I can't say enough about Dr. Brooks and, uh, and J.D. for stepping up and being a huge partner in this community. And also speak of hiring, the, the jail is always hiring. And remember, you start at 40000 a year, and there's a $5,000 sign-on bonus. You can start when you're 18. But you just went to one of the CODA graduations for our jail. Yes. Uh, I spoke at the CODA graduation, which is a Correctional Officer Training Academy. That's in Tucson. That's where we send all our detention officers. 
and we had two young ones. I mean, one I coached in high school for wrestling, one of our females, and and I remember when she was a junior senior talking to her about mentoring there. Hey, why don't you come work at our jail? I mean, she's a bright uh, star, and I mean, I don't, I don't want to do that. No, she did a couple of ride-alongs with the deputies. She worked, uh, went into the jail, did a couple of walkthroughs. And now she's graduated from our academy, and um, so I'm proud of her. Uh, that's uh, uh, Moyer's her last name, and the other one is Martinez. They're both very young, but the energy that they were displaying there day when I was up there, so excited. Their families were excited. Just a neat event. So uh, welcome aboard, and welcome to the team for both of them. Also, something that happened at the end of last year uh, in November that's going to affect us coming up in the year was the jail district. We had a committee that got together and learned everything they could about the jail so that they could disseminate that back into the public, and now the jail district is moving forward. It is, and you, the public's going to start seeing a lot, probably more than you ever want to hear, a lot. We have a special election in May of this year, so in five months, for you to decide if we need a new jail. So we want to make sure we provide you all the facts. So when you make that vote, it's an educated vote for those. So this is going to be a special election. I have a meeting here uh, with next week or so to do the final touches on the factoid sheet, if you want to call it. And then uh, we're going to be hitting the road, going around to all the cities, the communities, and talking, having, letting the people have the opportunity to come and talk to us about the jail, their thoughts, the good, the bad. you know. And, and right now, uh, 8 out of 15 sheriffs have a jail district, I believe it is. So we want to be nine. We want to be nine with that. And that sustains the criminal justice hub called the jail. So we got to have that. This one's almost 40 years old. So we got our, we got our uh, use out of this one. And so some of the things that you are working on or have been working on, we're going to back just a little bit. You swore um, in the Benson City Council this week. I did. Um, two, no, excuse me, Monday night. Or was it Tuesday night? Either way, this week went by so fast. Uh, I had the opportunity to swear in the mayor and council. And, and what a privilege that is. And these are new elected uh, folks to include the mayor. And it's just an honor uh, for a sheriff to come up there and embrace their community. And it also embraces the relationships we have uh, with our cities. I did Tombstone, swore in their mayor and council a couple months ago. So it just it's really neat to see that. And uh, unique, but welcome to the West, you know, with the sheriff and, the, and our cities working together. You also got to swear in a new SAT member. And remind us what SAT does because they do so much. They do. SAT is um, Sheriff's Assisting. That's our volunteer. People ask me about a posse. That is our posse, if you want to look at it. Between that and Search and Rescue, we have over 100 members strong. And they're vetted. They're not just, hey, come on and jump, and you've you got a uniform. No, they go through a vetting process, a very tough, uh, rigid, uh, they take a polygraph, I mean a lie detector to be on SAT, because so, they go to crime scenes. So if they're involved in some kind of evidence handling or witnesses, I have vetted people out there can testify in court that we know exactly who they are. Search and Rescue has a process similar. So um, I got to swear in. He's an active duty military uh, up at the military intelligence school. That uh, He's a senior sergeant that thought, hey, how can I get back to my community? So we swore him uh, in the other night at our the SAT's monthly meeting, and he brought his team. All soldiers were there in uniform. So it was really neat. It truly was. I think that's the first time we've had that. But, again, he saw SAT being something that does a lot in the community, which they do. I mean, I mean, they do hundreds and thousands of hours every year out there helping the community one way or another. Like the Glow Ride. They just did the Glow Ride for Christmas. And I went out and spoke at that. And uh, But they did. They did all the intersections. I mean, and there's no cost. We don't charge people for this. This is an outreach group that just goes out and touches the community in so many positive ways. So thank you to SAT. And congratulations to Dan that we just swore in. You need to give him a raise. I do. I tell them that every year. They're the easiest budget item I have, zero. You know. And so one of the things that you're also going to do today is talk about our youth and how they're up and coming. And, you know, you can you can start from the time you're in high school all the way through SAT. Just want to remind people of that. So you're going to talk to the Buena High School Student Council. Yeah, throw me a curveball. Let's hope I yeah. love to catch that one. I know. I, I like, saw the faces. Like yeah, that. I was like, where are we going with that? So, yes, and, uh, this morning I'm going to talk to the Buena High School Student Council, their school leadership. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and when I was in high school, I was with student council and uh, was student council president of my senior year. So this is always cool to go back and share my experiences and what I've learned and uh, the lessons, good and bad, back to the young leaders of Buena High School and into the future. So that's also great recruitment, too, great like you talk about. Trust me, I'll be able to do that. So, again, I'm, I'm excited. I do that annually every year. And uh, and this year they're doing their prom out at uh, Greer's. 
out the door out there. So they're going to be. They did it a couple of years ago. Their um, their leader at student council called me and said, "Hey, sheriff, will you help us? Yeah, we'll help you. No doubt about it, because it's a great event. And so they'll be going out into Greer's to do that this year. And at the end of the year, uh, we got some new grants that you want to talk about. We did. We we got an opiate uh, anti drug grant, which we're really excited about, which allows us to. Put people out in the community. Uh, it's going to pay for some personnel costs. We're going to do an outreach vehicle that we're in the process of looking to purchase and a bunch of anti-drug uh, swag, if you want to call it, that we can give out to kids at schools. It takes my officers. Uh, they're all well-trained. Trust me, they've seen enough drugs that they could talk a day on it, you know, that go into schools and the uh, civic organizations and talk about the what we're addressing in the community. Reality stuff, not scare tactics, but reality of the drugs that we're dealing with and the overdoses, which is sad, sad stuff. 300 people a day are dying every day in this country. That's incredible. And, and I, I compare that if an airliner went down, a commercial airliner went down every day, and two to 300 people are dying every day, we'd be all over that, wouldn't we? Why are we not talking about this? So I'm excited about this grant that we can engage at the local level. I can't control what others do, but we can do something here. And some of our engagement that we're doing is um, border-related or human smuggling. And so we have major chiefs coming next week to see what's going on with that whole program. We do. This is a kickoff from our meeting in September, our summit, where we had major county sheriffs, a Western National Southwest Border, and also International Association of Chief of Police. So as a result of that meeting, a, I think there's eight of them, Carol? Correct. Some eight chiefs. Uh, these are major city chiefs from all over the country. They're going to come here and see firsthand what we're doing in Cochise County on the border. I'm pretty pretty impressed that they selected us to do that. So that's being sponsored by National Sheriff Association. So they will be here coming in uh, Monday night, and then all day Tuesday we'll be spending time with them, uh, these chiefs. So if you see a bunch of chiefs running around, I mean, that's what that is. So. And so, coincidentally, they're going to be here, and they're going to see all of the, the challenges facing Cochise County and, and nationwide. And so January is Human Trafficking Prevention Month, and you have a group that is dedicated from the Sheriff's Office to handle human trafficking and smuggling, um, our criminal interdiction team. Yeah, we have a couple of special ops units. That's, that's what they do. They look for these people that are being trafficking. You know, there's a difference between smuggling and trafficking. Trafficking is against your will. There's no consent. Smuggling, there is a consensual uh, aspect to it. I consider it all smuggling and trafficking in myself. But there is a, a legal definition of both. Trafficking, especially those target young girls, um, males, and, um, and females, we want, we want to go after that. So we just, we're working with a group right now through a grant that's identifying those that have been trafficking along the border and then taken into urban areas in the county or in the state, uh, excuse me, country. And so we want to help identify and help get these people, rescue them is really what we're looking for. So that's a big program. It falls into what's going on this month when we recognize trafficking, um, what a crime it is and what a, it's modern day slavery folks, it truly is. And so we want to do our part uh, to bring some relief to those people that have been trafficked. And also the new year is a great time to remind people about Ready, Set, Go and our Alert Sense program because we want people to be informed. And make sure you go on to coaches.az.gov. You'll be able to find a link right there. Um, pretty easy to sign up. And it is a great way to be um, notified if there's anything going on. And you can set your notification levels. So you can even say if you uh, live in a, a more rural part of Cochise County, if you want something to be notified on, such as a boil water advisory. When I first saw that, I thought, we're never going to use that. But then buoy happened. So absolutely, you, you want to make sure that you get all of the information possible. But it's really important that you can sign up and you can get notified of things going on in your area. So take a look. Again, it's um, the Alert Sense program, and then we're just going to have that ease into the Ready, Set, Go. So we'll have a lot of information going out about uh, don't wait until before an event happens. You should be ready right now. Um, all the time so it's a preparedness issue we work closely with emergency services on that so everybody just make sure you take a look and go from there and also we need to we got some sad news to start off the year with a couple of the members of the family from Cochise County Sheriff's Office yeah you know one thing that we push real hard and go back to my annual message is we're one family we truly are we embrace each other we argue with each other, uh, we disagree, but we also hug and embrace when we need it. So we lost two of our valuable members. And um, Judy Barnett was one of our Sheriff's Assist Team members, and she worked two or three times a week. Uh, she was part of SAT, and she come in and shred, and she always made the point to come in and say hi to me and talk. And um, and she, 
her health wasn't doing well over the last month. Uh, I was talking to her here just a few weeks ago before uh, she passed, and she just, yeah, it, it's, we knew, we, we knew. And so she just passed here about a week ago. So uh, I talked to them and sat there night, her colleagues, when I was talking, swearing in Daniel. So it, it's a tough, that was a tough one. And uh, she's been around this community a long, long time. So we thank thank her for her service. Uh, rest in peace, Judy, and uh, prayers to her family. And so we have Martin Peterson, who was uh, working for our sex offender unit. Um, he, along with Manny Lozano, so we called them our M&Ms. The but M&Ms. they did a f- phenomenal job managing almost 300 offenders for Cochise County. You know, it just seems like it's continually growing. So um, he passed yesterday, and we're going to miss him. Yeah, he was pri- very private guy, retired out of our detention. And um, uh, he'd been fighting health for about the last year. And I just couldn't find a nicer guy. 40 years with us. Yeah, 40 years, mm-hmm. and I mean, that's that's a big part of our family. So that was hard news for all of us yesterday, too. So rest in peace, Martin, and God bless your family. Well, we, stopped, we talked about the uh, DUI task force, and your stop of the week is actually another DUI. It is. Uh, coming home the other night from swearing in the Benson City Council, came up on a vehicle that was all over the road. I mean, we're, we're not talking a little bit of drift. We're talking out of the lane numerous times. Uh, made the stop and uh, walked up and... It was somebody I had dressed before. And, you know, when when you're driving a motor vehicle, I think so many people forget the fact that that's a 5,000-pound bullet. It really is. And then you put speed behind it, velocity behind it. I mean, that's a dangerous scenario. Uh, she ended up getting arrested and going to jail uh, for impairment. But it's – I always just – and the motions are there. When I talk to people like that, they're stopped. They one minute they're thanking, next minute they want to argue with you. That's part of impairment. It is whether it's drug induced, alcohol induced, uh, all the same thing. But yeah, it, it's I just shake my head. I really do. And it's like, why did you make this decision? Why did you make this decision to drink and drive or use drugs and drive? It just makes no sense to me. And and there's a kind of a carefree attitude. And she made a comment to me. I'm just going to say it. She goes. Um, no problem. I'll beat it again. You know, I'll, I'll, they'll dismiss it again. And that was her attitude. And, and I, you know, of course, we, we have to be disciplined. We're professional. And, but there's, so, there's a human side that says, wow, you're never going to realize it until you kill somebody. And then we have a real problem here. Everybody does. We lose a community member. Your life's changed forever and on and on. So, again, every time I arrest, arrest somebody for DUI or we stop the threat, and that's our goal is to stop the threat, is the fact that well, if they, her case gets adjudicated, that's a to the legal, not me, but bottom line is we've done our part to stop and uh, save a life. So it's, just, it's uh, frustrating. I'll just throw that out. And also your safety message of the week is also about driving. It is, and I'm just going to share this, and this is something you're going to see some operations from the sheriff's office on is the move over law. That was in, uh, it went to effect uh, several years ago, five years ago, that states if you, somebody's broke down with emergency flashers, ADOS working along the road with their uh, lights on, emergency vehicle, fire, uh, police, you have to slow down and, when reason, pull to the left to avoid hitting the law enforcement officer, a citizen, or cause an accident. So many people don't. They don't move over for the the emergency lights. I'm talking about law enforcement Pacific now. And um, so we had an incident a couple weeks ago where a deputy made a stop on an individual the driver resisted the commands of the deputy into a physical altercation. There were drugs involved, fentanyl. Uh, this was a smuggler issue, a border issue. Uh, the deputy ended up uh, fighting along with Border Patrol, fighting uh, the individual. They landed in the roadway. Here comes a car at a very high speed. You can see in the body camera, the deputy looks over and literally hits the individual, the, the suspect that was, um, that was fighting the deputy, uh, and really rips him right out of the deputy's hands and kills him. Um, our deputy is still on administrative leave on this one, and I remember him making the comment to me, and I'll share it with the public, is, Sheriff, I don't know how I could have prepared for that one. And there is no preparation for that. I'll just tell you there is no preparation. Folks, you got to move over. Yeah, you have to move over. We we deal with traffic stops where we do, the intended results are not always there. Things happen. People fight us. Uh, there might be a medical condition. Who knows? But you got to give us some room to work. you just got to give that to us. But we're going to do some operations here and set up some uh, uh, traffic stops, and those that fail to, mo- that fail to move over will be cited. So we got to get that message out there. Well, why don't you give everybody a happy new year before you leave us today? 
I wish everybody a happy new year and thank you to everybody. It's a great community to serve. I've said it, it's a special community. Thank you for your support for public safety throughout Cochise County. I'm just glad I live here and uh, keep your health and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you for coming and talking to us today, Sheriff Mark Daniels. Thank you, everyone. And Carol, who do we have coming in next? We have Adam Curtis from the city of Sierra Vista. First Watch on KWCD Country. It's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. Hi, it's Michelle from The Country Lawyer. Did you know that Perry Hicks has been practicing law right here in Cochise County for over 35 years? And he- Information Officer Carol Kappas and Grady Butler on 92.3 KWCD. First Watch is brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, giving you an inside look into your Sheriff's Office. I'm Grady Butler, and with me is Carol Kappas, Public Information Officer with the Sheriff's Office, and our next guest. Welcome back, Cochise County, and thank you so much, Adam, for being here from the City of Sierra Vista. Um, So let's just kick it off. Tell us a little bit about when people drive by Martin Luther King, like I do frequently. Um, I see all the big... Um, bulldozers and everything else and I'm thinking man they're gonna make that track nice again not what are they doing there <laughs> the track will actually be nice again so okay. the old Apache Middle School track and football field uh, is seeing some major improvements uh, we acquired that property from the school district a couple years ago um, so we we own all those sports amenities back there um, so what we're doing is kind of a follow-up to uh, the first phase of an inter- energy initiative we did in 2019 uh, and that's when we upgraded the Sears Center soccer complex Complex and the Domingo Paya soccer complex. They're artificially turfed, uh, marked uh, for, for tournament play. Uh, they are really easy to maintain. Um, so that helped us actually generate about $3.3 million in economic impact locally through attracting 28 additional tournaments and about 11,940 visitors over, I think, about a a period from 2019 to 2021. So the work you're seeing now is the next phase of, of that energy initiative, um, and we partnered with Schneider Electric again um, to do more sports improvements, but also improvements throughout the city. Um, so you're going to see a 
awesome new field behind Apache with bleachers seating thousands of people. Um, it will be a football field and also a soccer field. Uh, the track will also be updated, uh, and that will be available for, for folks who like to walk and run. Uh, they will be gated off, but there will be public availability for that, too. Um, but aside from that, you know, there's LED lighting throughout that complex. There's a bunch of other sports upgrades. Um, and there's also updates to other city facilities, like uh, City Hall is getting a new roof, and I work at City Hall, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> um, the Cove's getting some really big improvements, too, uh, that are going to save a lot of water and energy. Um, and then some other kind of general updates, including some smart irrigation citywide, uh, some EV chargers that will actually be going live pretty soon. I don't have a go live date yet, but I'm expecting in the next month or so. Um, so a lot of stuff going on, and all together this is going to help us save about 6 million gallons of water each year um, and a ton of energy. Uh, so basically we finance this through municipal facility revenue bonds, uh, and then we pay it off uh, with a dedicated portion of our sales tax dedicated to capital improvements. So moral of the story is there's no new tax burden on local taxpayers, um, and these improvements are going to get done over an 18-month period, and we're going to see some awesome results really soon uh, that will hopefully help stimulate the sports tourism efforts even more and bring more economic economic activity to Sierra Vista, um, which supports our local businesses. Um, so it just kind of, um, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats kind of thing. Um, so, so the driving force behind this isn't just to, to support local residents and give them awesome amenities. That's very important to us. Um, but it also really does help draw new people to our area, uh, impress them with the awesome facilities we have, um, and introduce them to Sierra Vista, which has really been kind of a driving force behind some of these efforts. So let's talk about what's going on over at Gardner Avenue. Uh, so yeah, on uh, North Garden Avenue, uh, so you remember, uh, I'm sure folks remember all the construction on Fry Boulevard last year. Um, so basically that streetscape project over in the West End on Fry Boulevard is extending up North Garden Avenue this year. Uh, it's currently in the design phase and that will be completed, uh, let's see, what did I get? I think probably about April. Uh, and then we'll roll right into bids for construction. Uh, so you should expect to see some construction activity in the summer or early fall. Um, and that is funded through capital dollars, basically. Um, and it just kind of continues our revitalization efforts in the West End, uh, which have been multifaceted. Um, our partnership program in the West End has been going really well. Um, so you see some of the murals in the businesses and the updates to some of the businesses. That's a matching grant program um, that where the city can provide some matching dollars to support improvements at those businesses. Um, so to on Brew Pub is an example of a business that took advantage of that. Uh, they just pushed push back their opening date a little bit, but they'll be opening up on Garden Avenue soon. Uh, and we've seen a lot of investment on Garden Avenue in the last year to two years, uh, and even three years ago, starting with the uh, hotel that got renovated. Uh, so we're really excited about the activity in that area, and um, the folks that have been investing there have been really excited about the streetscape project and kind of the change to the environment. Um, so it's going to be an exciting time for the West End for the next few years, uh, and this is the next big step in that effort. Um, so definitely look forward to some big construction uh, going on in the summer and fall. And right now, everybody's hopefully taking down their Christmas trees. I'm sure that Fire Foster, uh, Firefighter Foster is here. He, he would like everybody's Christmas tree down because they're so dry. But there's something you can do with them. You don't have to just throw them in the landfill. Yeah, that's correct. So the City of Sierra Vista offers a free Christmas tree recycling program, and we turn uh, your Christmas trees into high-quality compost. It must be an actual, at one point, living Christmas tree, not, <laughs> not made out of plastic or, or some fake stuff. And please do remove all the ornaments and tinsel and also any of the support and metal supports that may have been put in one in, in the tree to help it stand. Um, that stuff does not work well in the chipper. Um, so, but yeah, you can drop it off for free uh, over at the compost facility. It's on the east side of town, and you can do that through January 28th. And that's actually available to both city and county residents. Uh, city residents, particularly just city refuse customers, can actually schedule a Christmas tree pickup as part of your regular green waste pickup. So each Wednesday, we do a special pickup for green waste. Uh, that's also free. Uh, you can call to schedule that. Uh, if you want more information, just go on our website, SierraVistaAZ.gov, uh, search for Green Waste, and you'll find that page. There's an online form to schedule drop-offs, and there's also a phone number for that. Um, but basically, yeah, like you said, it's good for the city, and it's good for our taxpayers, and it's good for the environment. Uh, because by diverting waste from the landfill, um, we're saving money because we have to pay tipping fees on that. And we're also saving space at the landfill, so we're you know, basically being good to the environment as well by putting these materials to good use in your yards, making your gardens awesome 
them versus just chucking them in the landfill. Uh, so please take advantage of that program if you still uh, do the live Christmas tree thing. Um, I know a lot of folks probably have moved to the fake ones and stuff, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of people really love the live ones too because it really kind of you know makes that kind of scent and spirit of the, the holidays and, and kind of fills your living room with that Christmas magic. Um, so yeah, definitely take advantage of that program. And you have a, a neighborhood program as well. Yeah, so in December we announced our new neighborhood partner program, and, and together with that was a partnership grant as well. Um, so they're a little bit separate because you can participate in each individually. The neighborhood partner program is almost kind of like an adopt a street or adopt a neighborhood kind of program, but you have to gather together a group of at least five people, uh, and then you can work with the city to help coordinate all of this. Um, but once you sign up, uh, we'll help coordinate cleanup efforts or whatever little projects you want to do. Uh, if you get approval from you know your private property owners, you could even help uh, like an elderly or disabled neighbor clean up their property, that kind of stuff, um, or just do other kind of minor improvements in your neighborhood, cleanup efforts, that kind of stuff. Um, so definitely check that out on our website. It's at servicetoaz.gov slash neighborhood partners. Um, and you can also probably just do a search for neighborhood partner uh, if you can't find it otherwise. Um, and you can also call the Community Development Department at 520-417-4413 to le learn more about that program. Uh, the grant that's separate from that, um, you can actually get that as a business or organization or another group. Um, and that is a, a grant for up to $2,500 for a project on like city rights of way in neighborhoods that would also benefit the community. Um, so you can use your imagination and come up with some inventive projects to that, but it must have a community benefit and it must be on city land for that because we're using city dollars to help support that. Um, but those are just two ways we're kind of extending some of the stuff we've done in the commercial area in the West End to also uh, you know kind of aid neighborhoods citywide and just empower people to kind of get together as neighbors and help each other. Um, it's kind of a good excuse to maybe meet your neighbors and kind of come together, um, and we just kind of want to help to facilitate that. Um, so our role isn't huge. Um, we're just going to give you some trash bags, some support, some coordination, uh, but we want to encourage people to, to help their neighbors and kind of come together to beautify their neighborhoods and that kind of thing, because uh, it just kind of extends what we're, what we're doing in our commercial corridors to kind of, you know, improve the residential areas too. And can the businesses apply for that grant money, or how does that work? Yeah, so businesses can apply for that grant money, but it has to take place in a neighborhood, and it has to be in a right-of-way. Um, so if you're in the West End, there's also the West Sierra Vista Partnership Program. Uh, that was the matching grant funds I mentioned earlier that take place kind of along Fry Boulevard in that corridor. Uh, so th if you're in that area, you may be eligible for that program, um, and that would be to for improvements at your business. Um, but yeah, businesses, organizations, any groups can take advantage of this residential grant program program too, but that'd be for city rights of way and stuff and neighborhoods. And they apply at the same place, whether they're a neighborhood or a business that can go to the website, give us that again. Yeah, absolutely. So sierravistaaz.gov and you can find inf more information about all these programs. Uh, for the neighborhood stuff, just search for neighborhood partners. Uh, and you can also always stop by City Hall or call our community development department at 417-4413. And tell us a little bit um, really quickly about the museums. Yeah, so the Henry F. Hauser Museum got a really exciting donation from the Sierra Vista Historical Society in December. Uh, they donated $100,000 for renovations of the museum. Uh, so that will actually be taking place in October, in all likelihood. So sometime in the fall, uh, the museum will probably close for some extensive renovations. But prior to that, opening up in May, will be a Jurassic Wonders exhibit. So it'll be all about dinosaurs, so folks can look forward to that. Uh, the current uh, exhibit highlights history of the West End. And then uh, next month in February, uh, the museum is hosting an escape room on weekend nights, uh, and you can call the museum now to sign up. You can call them at 439-2306. That's 439-2306. Uh, and it's a free escape room. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the museum creator does an awesome job with these activities. Uh, people love them, so you should definitely go check that out. Um, and then look forward to really, really cool new improvements heading into next year uh, for the museum that will kind of really make it a lot more flexible, uh, more engaging, and kind of more modernized in some of the kind of ways we can showcase um, local history. Every time I talk to Adam Curtis, I feel like I know everything there is to know about Sierra Vista now. I know. It's like one-stop shopping. I've got it all now. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to roll for the new year. <laughs> yeah, that's my job. <laughs> so do we, uh, did we miss anything? Because that was a lot of information. I think we covered everything you wanted to cover. Uh, yeah, I think we touched on everything. Yeah, I, 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 def I definitely want to remind folks to uh, you know uh, take advantage of that Christmas tree recycling while there's still time. 
Um, but yeah, aside from that, I, I think we touched on everything I need to get to. Well, we really appreciate you coming yep. and talking to us today because it's so much good information. We appreciate it. It's Adam Curtis, PIO with the City of Sierra Vista. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And Carol, who do we have coming in next? So we have Fireman Don. Is that what you called him a minute ago? Yeah, Fire Fireman Don. Don. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's the Foster. fire marshal. Yeah, fire marshal. So, <laughs> hey, everybody get ready for that. KWCD Country. It's First Watch brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. Hi, does our clinic is Sierra Vista's most trusted provider for urgent and occupational care services. We are currently... message is brought to you by Dunn Insurance, located at 322 Bartow Drive, for all your business, auto, and home insurance needs. It's First Watch Now. Hosted by Public Information Officer Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. On 92.3 KWCD. And it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. And Carol, we've got our next guest. We do, and we'll do this officially this time. We have Fire Marshal Foster from Sierra Vista Fire. <laughs> that's, oh, that's good. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> I appreciate that, Carol. What's kind of fun is I have a friend called Dan Foster, and every right. time I start to say your name, I panic that I'm going to say Dan Foster instead of Don Foster. Right. And if you heard that segment earlier when I said, the firefighter full of fire Foster. <laughs> uh, it works. This is the fire marshal Don. You know? That's right. <laughs> the, the fun of, of live radio. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, the firefighter's Christmas drive was in December. You guys do this every year. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, over 50. I think yes, that this past year was our 51st. Wow. So tell us how it went. Give us a recap. Yeah. Actually went really well this year. Uh, so our final totals, we uh, we were able to help out 224 families with over 595 kids throughout you know, Sierra Vista, Palominas, and Hereford areas. So a lot of uh, we we were out we were able to go out there and help a lot of a lot of people for sure. Um, did really well with our donations. We had a lot of big cash donations from some of our uh, local. Um, Sponsors, you know, like Canyon Vista, uh, Ace, Slotsky's, um, Arby's really stepped up and uh, really gave us a big check, Barnett's. Um, so we just, we really just got a lot of help from the community. And we had a lot of individuals just drop off, you know, just, 
they come in with just uh, you know a bunch of cash or checks just from individuals as well this year. So it, it really helped out. And that's one of the things, you know, you touch so many people's lives. And I know Town Square Media was there. Um, Grady was out there doing a lot of cool stuff. Was we did Re- our live broadcast, yeah. And Rebecca was there. Rebecca yeah. was there, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, I mean, I think that and just seeing you guys out there and, and you have the ladder up in the truck and everybody stops by. And it's just, you know, an event unto itself before the event. Yeah. And it was, it was yeah, we, we try to, every year we try to make it a little bit bigger and more, you know, fun and stuff for the people to stop by. Um this year was a little cold, though, wasn't it? it was. <laughs> so uh, I'll have you know, I, I actually got some uh, some heaters for us for next year, okay. so uh, we won't be freezing to death out there. But um, it was uh, it was it was pretty fun. We had a uh, we we had um, our little uh, talking fire hydrant, and um, we had uh, Squirt, the little drivable um, you know brush truck and stuff. And so it, we just had a lot of people participate. And a lot of people just stopping by and saying hi and stuff. It was pretty cool. Well, on behalf of the community, we want to thank, from the community, thank the firefighters for what you guys do. You know, we helped you out to do this, but now it's our turn to say thank you for do- doing this every year. Well, we appreciate it, you know, and uh, our thanks is just seeing the smiles on the face of the kids, you know, that we go out there and deliver because it really, it, it does make a difference for them. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Well, we talked about Christmas trees and how they're being recycled now with the city of Sierra Vista, but let's remind everybody how dangerous those things are. Oh, yeah. You've seen videos. Um, there, there's all kinds of videos out there of bad Christmas tree fires. And amazingly, you know, now that we have, like, videos in the home and stuff, blink and things like that, you see more, you know, even house fires. But those the, the Christmas trees, when they dry out, I mean, they go up just like a torch, you know, and, uh, and um, that'll fill your house with smoke pretty fast. And, and it's, it's super dangerous at this time of year. So if you still have your Christmas tree up and it's a live one, Maybe to, um, take it down and get it recycled. There you, you know? go. <laughs> uh, um, so I think more people are going to the other version of it, though. Um, I grew up, I always had a Christmas tree, a live Christmas tree, and I never thought I would make the switch but um, because of the scent and stuff, and it was just one of those things you did, you know. But, um, yeah, they're kind of dangerous, you know, and so we like to encourage the the non-flammable variety so you don't have a little extra van at Christmas, you know, some <laughs> extra surprises. You don't have your fireworks early for New yeah, Year's. Yeah, you don't want to necessarily do that in your living room, right? <laughs> and one of the things that you guys do also from your standpoint is um, make sure you, en- you guys make sure you encourage people to test their smoke detectors. Yeah, you know, smoke detectors are something people, you know, they don't think about them unless they go off in the middle of the night, right? You hear that little beep, that annoying beep and stuff. And, and uh more often than not, when we get calls for those things, um, people will change their battery just on that one, and they'll still get the beep. And so what the next step for them is usually that they'll just take it down, right, um, which is not the Aggressively. right thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with the hammer, right? But people need to realize that those those smoke detectors are not just changing the batteries. You, they, they only last at max 10 years. So you'd be surprised at how many houses I go to because I do that on my off time right Um, (laughs) just for fun just for fun i'll go out and uh, if you have your smoke detector (laughs) it's going off i'll look at them and a lot of what i pull down i just look at the date the first thing that i do and and most of them are like 20 years old and so maybe they work maybe they don't but they'll they'll give you those annoying beeps so if you're having that it's probably time to replace it um, we do offer a free service. Um, it's more like it's mostly geared to the elderly or people that are not able to get on ladders and stuff because we don't want them to hurt themselves. But they can actually make an appointment, um, 417-4400, um, that's our station three, to do a free smoke detector check on it, and they'll check the batteries. And if it's out of date, they'll let you know um, about it, and, um, and they'll help you out with that. Well, Fire Marshal Foster, we thank you for coming and talking to us today. We appreciate it, and thanks again, and, and especially thanks to you guys here. Uh, you know, you guys really help us out throughout the, throughout the year, honestly, but especially during the Christmas time. So thanks for your support, and um, we'll, we'll see you next year. We're happy to help. All right. And, Carol, how do they get a hold of us at the Sheriff's Office? So reach out at cochise.az.gov slash sheriff. Um, you can give us a call, 520-432-9500. But if you go to our social media, our Facebook page, Cochise County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Mark J. Daniels, that'll take you to our Twitter and our Instagram. First Watch on KWCD Country is brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. You-
have been listening to First Watch with the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Hosted by Cochise County Public Information Officers Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. Join us again next Friday morning, 7 to 8 a.m. First Watch. What you need to know from the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Only on 92.3 KWCD. Hi, this is...